In this video, I am going to show you everything that I do before my workout to optimize my session as much as possible. I have been training for over half a decade, studied personal training and sports science in Newcastle College. And I'm going to show you everything that I've learned that helped me get the most out of my session. Starting off with my pre-workout meal. Now, for my pre-workout meal, I like to divide this into two main parts. My regular meal, which is just my meal prep that would have two hours before my workout, like stuff like your chicken and rice, pasta, minced beef, etc. You don't want to have these things too close to your workout because then what happens is your body begins to send blood towards your stomach rather than towards your muscles when training in order to help with digestion. And when that happens, you feel bloated, you feel lethargic, you have less energy to give to your workout as well as you're not having that blood flow which gives you the pump that you want during your session to get a worse muscle connection. So make sure to have this two hours before your workout and not too close to it. And for my pre-workout meal, so people usually have this three, 30 minutes before your workout of TV things like fruits, berries, honey, rice crispy, just fast complex carbs that break down really quickly. So I would go with always just honey and blueberries mixed together. It's much better than something like a Rice Krispie because Rice Krispies, even though they are very high in complex carbs and your body digests them very fast, a lot of glucose, and get a great pump from it, A, it's not very healthy, and B, it causes brain fog. And when you have brain fog, you lack the mental sharpness to gift your session. And when you're as focused, you won't be able to power through those last few reps in your set. Let's say you're doing 3x10 and that ninth or last rep trying to push through where most of the growth actually happens, because your brain's quite foggy and you're feeling a bit sluggish, you won't be able to give it your all or power through it and you're limiting your growth. But if you have something like this, which is A, it's less ingredients than a Rice Krispie, it's only berries and honey, <laughs> that's it. Uh, it gives you that pump, it gives you that energy without the brain fog, so it's the best of both worlds. Other good examples as well are things like your fruits, uh, kiwis, bananas, etc., things like that. Common popular examples as well, I've seen online a lot, are uh, things like your carb powders. I'm not a big fan of these, I've tried them, but I find that the volume is so small that I still feel hungry mid-workout. So yes, the carbs and the pump is there, but I just find whether I have them pre or intra workout, they haven't really given me much of a result. And I've tried it for months on end and they never really quite worked out for me. But when it comes to your pre-workout meal, the main thing is just not feeling hungry. That is the number one factor that you want to consider. You want to make sure that you're not bloated, that there isn't much blood going towards your stomach, but also making sure you're not hungry either, finding that middle point. For most people, you get the balance by having a big meal two hours before your workout and a pre-workout meal, which is just something as small as this, 30 minutes before your workout. Next, we have supplements. The biggest one, as usual, is caffeine. Caffeine is a great source of energy and focus, as well as helps to suppress hunger, which, like we mentioned, is an important part when it comes to training. Now, with caffeine, I would always recommend do not consume pre-workouts. Every single brand that I've tried, I've tried ABE, I have tried Optimum Nutrition, C4, uh, Gorilla Mind, I tried all so many brands and every single time the pre-workout itself gave me a great performance boost, however, it then had a much bigger impact on my sleep. So I was feeling better in the gym, but then because I was not sleeping properly, my recovery went down and all your muscle quite literally gets built while you are asleep. So if you consume pre-workout, and I've never met someone who took pre-workout and then it not having any effects on their sleep. Even if you get eight hours of sleep, you'll find that the quality of the sleep tends to go down. And if you take pre-workout, just one scoop, it'll be before 12, like 10 hours before I go to bed, and I will still notice the difference that it has in my sleep. So instead of this, I would highly recommend simply having coffee. Black coffee, I'd recommend around 150, upwards of 250 milligrams of caffeine, depending on your body weight and your tolerance. Something as simple as this, your body consumes quite fast, it's one ingredient, and it's not mixed with any other preservatives. Because even though your label brand pre-workouts, they would have just the regular ingredients to boost your performance, like your beta alanine, L-citrulline, caffeine, but then they have other ingredients inside of it to make it stick together to hold all the ingredients in one scoop, as well as flavorings and preservatives to make it last longer. And that stuff itself has no benefit to your workout. All it does is make it taste not nicer, make it a more pleasant experience to consume. 
which then can cause bloating to some people and that's not as big of a factor and i've tried the stem free pre-workout and that's i just find that it's much better to just buy your own single ingredients online and mix it together so what i do pre-workout i would have some coffee uh, 250 milligrams of caffeine worth. I will always have filtered coffee over instant coffee. The difference is like 1%. I just find that filtered coffee is more pure and your body absorbs it much faster. And then I mix that coffee that I make with some electrolytes. Electrolytes are very important for training because when you're hydrated, hydration plays a big part in muscle, muscular contraction. So we have electrolytes in your body, able to contract your muscles much better and get a better mind-muscle connection when training. Next up, we have beta alanine. I find this has two main uses for me. It gives me that itch where I feel awake, alert, I feel focused, I have that mental clarity. Which like I mentioned, when you're in that last rep, trying to squeeze out that last little effort to finish the set, it's super important. Plus, it is... Kind of makes your skin itch. Wasn't able to like that. Some don't. I like that because again, makes me feel very awake. Uh, I can really feel the energy that it gives me. And then there's some creatine. I would have these three mixed together with black coffee. And I would drink it for my workouts. And that's four ingredients in comparison to 20 or 30 that are in here. And again, not all these ingredients are performance enhancing. Some of them are just flavorings, sweeteners, preservatives our stuff to keep the ingredients together in one scoop now with this it is a less pleasant experience because it tastes like ass to be honest with you and because electrolytes taste very salty and black coffee is bitter you'll find when you do things like this it has a positive effect on your dopamine levels because you can't afford to do something uncomfortable which in turn puts your dopamine levels at a lower baseline but the number one thing that's more important than all of these combined is sleep Sleep is so essential to having a good session. I've noticed the difference when I train with a good night of sleep versus a bad night of sleep. And the difference is honestly immeasurable. No pure workout, no amount of caffeine can replicate the effect a really good night of sleep when you had high amounts of deep sleep and REM sleep will have on your workouts. Mainly because besides sleep is the time with muscles being built, it's also the time where your joints, tendon, and everything is being healed. All those micro tears you are creating or training, all those little minor injuries that preventing them from getting bigger over the, over the line, all that gets repaired while you are asleep. And even your internal systems, like your brain, it processes all of its thoughts throughout the day during your sleep, which is where dreams come from as well. And you'll find that when you have a bad night of sleep, besides the physical ability, feeling a bit sluggish, it's also a lot of brain fog, a uh, lack of ability to focus, and you'll find that you still have thoughts from yesterday that your brain still hasn't finished processing. You have multiple nights of sleep that effect will compound. Uh, for some people, they go through phases where they have three, four nights of mediocre sleep, then one weekend just crash. 14 hours, they sleep it off uh, throughout the, the whole day. And then after it, they feel super refreshed because the brain finally had a chance to work on all of its internal processes that it didn't get a chance to work on before because you're so busy training, which again puts more stress on your body and recovery just takes a back step against all of that. So sleep will have a bigger effect on your, so sleep will have a bigger effect on your workout than any sort of caffeine. So I recommend you you prioritize it. I have a sleep video coming out very soon, so if this is something you'd be interested in, subscribe and you get notified when it comes out. But just make sure you do everything you power to get a good night of sleep. Now, the last part I want to mention, uh, which I do not believe I have to mention this, is warm up. No one that I know warms up. The last five people I train with do not warm up. I have to force them through it. And every time it's like, oh, do you have to? And if you do not warm up, that's fully up to you. But every single athlete in the world, Cristiano Ronaldo, Chris Bumstead, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler, LeBron James, all of them warm up before a game, before training, before sparring, etc. So why wouldn't you? Most people get to intermediate level and they think, yeah, I haven't lifted for three years. I don't need to warm up. I know my body quite well, which I think is quite idiotic because you know, you're saying that you're better than those athletes, which is quite egotistical as well. And the amount of people I saw that hit plateaus and then asked them about their training and they say, oh, I don't warm up, I don't stretch. I've been doing mobility stuff, and I will, that's probably the first thing we should tackle. So yes, 
I recommend you warm up, just three minutes of cardio, five minutes of stretching, hang from above for a minute. That's all you gotta do. It has a major effect on your performance. I do find it odd that I have to mention this and um, point it out, but believe me when I say that warming up will have tremendous effects on your training. Now, if you have any questions about anything that I mentioned previously, do put in the comments down below, or if you have things that you have tried and have your own opinions on, please do let me know. The more data there is in the comments, the more it'll be helping me make active videos going forward in the future. If you like one-to-one -one online coaching, my email will be in the description down below. we can help you achieve your dream physique. As usual, thank you for your time and attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.